is uh, similar to a cohort study in that participants are allowed or followed from the exposure to the outcome. But in the clinical trial, the investigators assigned the patients to the in in interventions. The best way to evaluate the efficacy of a new treatment is to identify a group of patients with the same condition and then randomly allocate them into comparison groups, which are given the various treatments to follow up and uh, compare the outcomes between the groups. Taking the clinical, ran clinical randomized trial as a model, study design of the experimental studies will be illustrated in more details later. And a clinical trial is a planned experiment designed to assess the efficacy of a treatment. So that in a group of patients treated with the test treatment with those observed in a comparable group of patients receive a control treatment. While well, patients in both groups are enrolled, treated, and followed over the same time period. Therefore, one starts by determining eligibility of the potential subjects. Eligibility rules must be carefully defined and rigidly enforced. Criteria for inclusion will vary by the type and the nature of the intervention proposed. Once eligible uh, subjects agree to participate, they are then randomly assigned to one of these study groups. When we take a look at the definition of the clinical trial, the clinical trial is a prospective study comparing the effect and the value of interventions against a control in human beings. The objective for the clinical trial is to assess the efficacy and the effectiveness of a new intervention or drug. It can also help establish the role of the new drug or intervention in the clinical practice. An example of a major therapeutic clinical trial is the beta blocker heart attack uh, trial. This study enrolled men who have just experienced a myocardial infection, that's a heart attack, and randomly assigned them in to receive a drug named propranadol and a placebo. So that in a, uh, so that in the beta blocker is a drug that inactivates the beta androgen neurons. The beta blocker trial was a success in that participants receiving the active treatment were demonstrated to have better survival. The benefits became clear even before the trial and have re reached its planned duration, so it was stopped earlier. Another example is a trial, clinical trial for the preventive use, that is an example in the trial of Cetovidine that in the prevention of perinatal transmission of HIV virus from a pregnant mother to her infant. This trial is often referred as uh, ACTG-076 because it was a protocol 076 evaluated by the AIDS clinical trial group. And in this clinical trial, pregnant women who were infected with HIV were randomized to receive cytophotine or already beginning uh, six weeks before their expected delivery date and intravenous cytophotine during labor and delivery. The newborn infants was then given oral didovodine until 86 weeks. The trial was a great success, reducing the probability of maternal transmission of HIV by about two-thirds. As a result, all pregnant women are supposed to be consulted about and test for HIV, who, with women who test positive being urged to take antiretroviral medicines. According to whether the clinical trial is randomly or not, assigned for the intervention, it can be divided into intervention randomly assigned clinical trials and intervention not randomly assigned. While well, randomization is actually a key feature in the clinical trial. And the uh, randomized controlled trial or randomized clinical trial is an experimental study where participants are randomized either to receive the new intervention being tested or to receive a control treatment. And the control treatment will really be the standard treatment or placebo. And the in the next slide, we will uh, show the content of the clinical trial, how to, what are the phases of the clinical trial, what are the principles of the clinical trial, and how to design this clinical trial. In this figure, we show that there are several steps to uh, show the clinical development that would need to exam for a drug. First, we need to have a phase one clinical trial to check for the safety of the drug, and uh, also to uh, evaluate the unexpected side effect. The phase two trial will check for the efficacy of this, this drug or therapy, and it will need about 200 patients. And uh, 
the most uh, research subjects filling this phase two trial due to drugs were not being as effective as anticipated. And in the phase three trial, we needed to confirm the findings in this result in a larger population, usually more than 1,000 people. And during this phase three trial, it's, there's some likelihood to detect very some rare side effect. Well, in the phase, two, uh, phase four trial, we will test long-term safety in diverse patient population. And these samples are the real-life patients which uh, were carried out the side of the clinical environment. And this is also called the post-marketing studies. Okay, now let's take a close look at the different phases of clinical trial. We will take the example of an innovative drug, uh, anti-cancer drug from a Chinese company named uh, Belgium, and they have developed a new drug targeting at the BTK signal. The drug is named Zembrotibnib. And uh, in this example, uh, we will first start from the phase one clinical trial, which will identify the dose range that is well tolerated and safe, and at least with regard to this high frequency and severe uh, side effect. So we can see that in this uh, clinical trial, it has uh, enrolled about uh, uh, 62 overall the uh, patients within this phase one clinical trial to test about the pharmacal kinetics of this drug. And then, in the later on, they started this phase two clinical trial for the drug. And uh, this uh, result has already been published in journals. And uh, in this phase two clinical trial, it tests the preliminary information on whether the drug is infectious and on the relationship between the dose and the efficacy. We can see that in, in this single one phase two clinical trial, that the, the, the drug has caused a slight reduce of the mortality of the uh, patients. And the next is the phase one clinical trial in which uh, this drug has been compared with uh, some uh, other treatment that, that is named as the ibrutinib in the patients. And this trial will provide definitive uh, evidence of efficacy and the present of some of the common side effects. Now, currently, it is under, uh, under it is still under surveillance and under follow-up for the results. And here, this shows the protocol of this trial. And thereafter, there's a phase four clinical trial. And in the phase four trial, which is also named as post-marketing surveillance, and it will follow up a very large number of patients after drug is in the general use. And it will provide the precise estimation of the uncommon side effect. So we can see that uh, there are four major aims for this phase four clinical trial. That is, uh, first, to detect adverse events or risk as they arise during the real world use of the drug, and to compare the new product or treatment with these existing options. And it will also update the clinical guidelines as certain populations or groups find, will find more benefit from this drug. And it will also comply with the regular requirements for this drug. And in the following uh, slides, we will discuss mainly about the principles of the clinical trials. There are four major principles for the uh, clinical trials. The first is randomization, the second is uh, comparison, and the third is blending, and the fourth is repetitivity. So, as we have mentioned, randomization is the key feature for the uh, clinical trials. And why is the randomized design of the uh, intervention so important? So. Randomization is to determine the assignment in order to reduce the bias, to influence, to improve the comparability. And randomization is also important because overall, it provides the strongest evidence for causal inference. Randomization is important because through randomization, we can best assure that the control group as the unexploded group is a valid substitution of the population, which can avoid the several selection of the exposures. And randomization is the only way to control for the unknown factors that could bias the exposed and unexposed group. It can also facilitate the masking of the exposure status and avoid ambiguity of the time order of exposure and outcome. That means that most of the intervention studies can achieve this because uh, we, after intervention, we can observe the outcome. The outcome will not uh, occur before the our interventions. And it will also provide the foundation for our statistic test that is the valid quantification of this uncertainty through this randomization and sampling. And how do we know that the, our randomization has succeeded in our, our design for this randomized clinical trial? It's easy that we can do a descriptive of the data that was uh, allocated that was for the patients that was allocated into the uh, standard therapy and the intensive therapy. If we compare with each other and find that the central tendency and the, the, of these numbers and the 
these tendencies are close to each other. We can think that uh, this uh, randomization has succeeded and keep the uh, features of these two groups as very balanced. The next principle is the comparison principle. The decision not to uh, establish a control group as a comparison is to differentiate the specific effect from the non-specific effect of the test intervention. The non-specific effect includes the unpredictable uh, uh, outcomes, the regression to the mean, and uh, the natural history of the disease, the other factors that are associated with outcome, the Hudson effect, and the placebo effect. The Hudson effect, which means the procedure of the association, could be the same for the treated and untreated group, since the people tend to change their behaviors because they are the target of the special interest and intention in the study. Regardless of this specific nature of the intervention, they might be received. And the uh, Hudson effect has been uh, used to uh, test whether uh, there will be uh, interventions when we need to uh, take a look at it. Well, another effect is the placebo effect. Uh, placebo effect is the means I shall please effect. The placebo is uh, indistinguishable from the active pill in the physical appearance, color, taste, and smell. The sugar pills and the salons in injections are some examples of the placebos. And the placebo uh, will also may affect the results. Actually, when we uh, do a comparison between the control and the intervention group, we have uh, mixed the placebo effect, the regression to mean effect, the uh, natural history effect as the thing under consideration. And after uh, setting up this, and on, on top of this effect, we then can find out whether the treatment effect was actually the uh, effect that uh, influences the prognosis of the patients. The next principle is the blending principle. Blending is a process designed to make the various participants in the study unaware of which treatment patients have been offered, so that the knowledge does not cause them to damage the internal validity of the study. The goal of the blending is to reduce the effect of belief on the symptom and action. This concern relates more directly to the person or persons who are supposed to make judgment or decision regarding the outcome. This concern is especially wanted if the trial evaluates a new drug, the drug's manufacturer is financing the trial, and all. So, so those performing in the evaluation tend to benefit if the new drug is shown to be more effective than existing medications. Blending is not always necessary. If the only outcome of the interest is death, then there is little reason to be concerned about biased classification of the outcome, because judgment is not an important factor in determining whether the patient is dead. Blending may not always be feasible either. In some situations, there may be not feasible ways of blinding patients and study personnel to the difference in treatment. It may not be feasible or ethical to provide a, a same procedure that could make blinding possible. Thus, although blinding is often desirable, it is not always necessary or possible. Minimizing the manage, measurement bias in this situation may be best accomplished by bringing in an independent blind uh, observer whose only involvement is to assess the outcome measure. Planning of outcome measurement obviously becomes more crucial as the measurement becomes more sophisticated. Whether the outcome uh, measure is objective and uh, less dependent on the interpretation as in a biomedical um, parameter of death, blinding is less important than. And for those uh, uh, clinical trials that blinding was not feasible, it is usually called an uh, open label trial. Let's first see a single blind trial, which only the patients are unaware of their assigned treatment, which is uh, particularly important when the outcome is measured uh, subjectively, such as uh, in trials investigating the pain relief. For example, if the patient knows that he or she is receiving a new drug and is suspicious of this new drug, then the patients might be more likely to report worse outcomes and or uh, withdraw from this trial in advance. The second is the double plan. Double planning can prevent the bias from the participants as well as the interviewer. So since the evaluator's uh, knowledge of the treatment assigned would also be significantly distort the results, double blind is the most common used clinic in the clinical trials, in which both patients and the evaluators are unaware of the patient's assigned treatment. For example, if the evaluator are aware of the patient's assigned treatment, they might show different attitudes towards the patients in different treatment groups. And in triple blind, the trivial blind trial means that 
in which the patient's treatment assignment is unknown to the patient, to the evaluator, and even the data analysis. The final principle of is uh, the repetitivity principle. Repetitivity refers to the uh, issue of whether the findings of the trial are likely to be reproduced in other settings. To ensure this repetitivity, we usually have a multicentral clinical trial to ensure the generalization of our results.